You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online and subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. Uh, you can find us online over at quicksurf.com. If you're uh, watching this on YouTube, there's a subscription link up above the video. Um, otherwise, if you want to use uh, your mobile device of choice or your podcatcher application of choice, uh, you can uh, find links to subscribe to an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, an H.264 uh, standard def and high def feed uh, in the show notes of every episode. Just visit us online over at quicksurf.com and uh, select the whatever the latest episode that was released and, for Linux News Log, and you'll see those under the subscribe heading. With that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode, starting off over at redhat.com of all places. Uh, Red Hat has released uh, their next version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6, uh, version 6.4, if I am not mistaken. Um, this is a typical press release. Uh, so they're uh, adding uh, parallel NFS or their PNFS uh, capability. Um, with uh, uh, NetApp and they're focusing on security through enhanced identity management. They're improving the virtual guest experience on VMware and Hyper-V. Uh, they have updated management capabilities and new tools and, and improved productivity support. So if you are a Red Hat customer, definitely uh, check this version out for uh, consideration to upgrade. From PC World over in their Linux line blog, meet Manjaro Linux, a brand new distro on the rise. Catherine Noyes has this article here with virtually countless Linux distributions available for every taste and purpose. It's no secret that choice is a defining feature of the Linux world. Yeah, in many cases, it's too much choice. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just for some people, too much is a bad thing. Uh, what's not always apparent, though, is that the range of choices actually gets bigger every year, and this is true. So a couple of things about Manjaro. It's based on Arc Linux. It's uh, user-friendly yet powerful. You have numerous desktop options. They have what's called rolling releases. Uh, their rolling release development model, you always have... What, basically what that means is that you have to s always have the most up-to-date system possible without the hassle of involving to formally install new versions. This is something I wish FreeBSD would do. Um, and uh, you get a world of software with it. So definitely check it out. She's got a nice uh, write-up here. Um, you know, basically, I thought it was pretty cool. I'll probably be checking it out here in a virtual machine in the not-too-distant future. Over at Engadget, uh, all of you uh, hopefully have undoubtedly heard about the Google Chromebook Pixel. Well, it allows for custom bootloaders, which means you can load Linux on it. That's right. You can load Linux. It's barely just started shipping, but um, if you want and you have one, Linux kernel patches have been submitted for the hardware. And uh, Google's Bill Richardson has now laid out exactly how to load up the devices with Linux Mint. He says that part of the Chrome OS BIOS is read-only, so changes to it are generally exclusive to new hardware. Um, so uh, Pixel has been tuned to support user-provided custom bootloaders thanks to the unverified BIOS slot. Uh, unfortunately, Mint doesn't support the laptop's touchscreen and trackpad, but you know this is coming in the future. I can totally see like a touch Ubuntu on something like this. That would be pretty neat. Anyway, check it out. Um, you know, obviously this is all brand new stuff, so we'll be monitoring this to see what comes of it. Over at ZDNet, in their, under the uh, Linux blog by Stephen J. Von Nichols, a survey shows companies need Linux talent and they need it bad. This is great news for Linux pros and bad news for hiring managers. 
Um, the 2013 Linux Jobs Report survey, which was conducted by the Linux Foundation and DICE, uh, has uh, come up with this. Um, basically, uh, hiring managers from corporations, small, medium businesses, government, staffing agencies, they all want Linux professionals and they want them now. This is a survey of 850 hiring managers and 2,600 Linux professionals. 93% of hiring managers say they will hire Linux Pro in the next six months, an increase from 89% in 2012. More hiring managers in 2013 say that finding Linux talent is difficult. 9 out of 10 in 2013, 8 out of 10 in 2012, underscoring the opportunity for tech professionals who know Linux. So system administrators are the most sought after Linux pros. Obviously, they need someone to run the uh, Linux powered back room. This is, you know, again, these guys are going to cost a lot of money because they're rare. And 75% of Linux professionals surveyed have received at least one call from a recruiter in the last six months. I know I have. I'm not a Linux admin, but I do a lot of embedded Linux work. My current job actually is uh, doing development in an embedded Linux environment. So um, pretty cool. Uh, definitely check it out if, if you want a good career opportunity, learn Linux. Uh, the internetnews.com website has a nice short and sweet little post here. Uh, Linux 3.8 has been released. This is pertaining to the Linux kernel. Um, pretty neat. It's the first one in 2013. Uh, the 3.7 kernel uh, debuted in December, so not too bad, almost three months later. And uh, one of the um, things the 3.8 kernel does not add any processor architecture. Instead, it's removing one. We talked about this before. They're dropping off the uh, 386 support. So still, got to do it. Over at InfoWorld in their Mobilize section, uh, there's this interesting article here, hands-on with the Ubuntu Touch Linux smartphone. That's right. We talked about this last time. Um, and uh, basically, uh, this is a nice write-up by Galen Grumman on his little uh, hands-on uh, thing. Um, there is some bad news for eager users, as he writes. This is a don't-try-it-at-home release with... The, which the formal instructions do not strongly cue you in on. You can only install this on a handful of Google devices, which is the Galaxy Nexus smartphone, the Nexus 4 smartphone, and the Nexus 7 tablet, and doing so wipes out the Android OS on it. Uh, the good news, Ubuntu Touch is a more compelling mobile environment, even in the first developer version, than he expected. It borrows heavily from other mobile UIs, including BlackBerry 10, the iPad, Android, WebOS, and Windows Phone, and yet manages to feel like its own OS. It's much too soon to rate, but the OS is promising for reasons that he explains below. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You definitely need to check this out. Quite a nice write-up. It's two pages long. Should take you no more than 10, 15 minutes. With that, uh, that's all I've got for this episode. So uh, please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, thank you for subscribing. For those of you who have, you can always shoot me an email, linux at quickstuff.com, if you see something that you'd like to see considered for inclusion on the show. And I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.